Story time about why I will never let my sister pet sit for me ever again. So a little background information, I was 18 and it was the summer before my freshman year in college. And it was towards the end of the summer so I decided that I wanted to take a vacation with a few of my girlfriends before we all went off to the different colleges that we were going to. And I have a lot of pets. I have four hamsters, two snakes, a tarantula, two birds, and one fish. So I asked her if she could watch all of them. She said yeah, so I wrote her out a schedule of when they need to be fed. And I wasn't even going to be gone a week, so it would be pretty easy because I already cleaned all their tanks and everything like that. And I wasn't worried at all because I trusted my sister. She had two dogs and a cat, so I thought she was going to be fine. I called her the first two days. Everything seemed to be going well. And I called her on the fourth day, and she didn't answer the phone. So I called my mom, asked her if she could get a hold of her. And my mom said that she spent the two days at her boyfriend's house, like for part two. Part two about why I will never let my sister pet sit for me ever again. So like I said, I called my mom asking if she could get a hold of her and she said that she spent the last two days at her boyfriend's house. And the worst part was my sister was the only one with a key to my apartment. So my sister calls me the next day and she's like, hey, sorry, like I was at my boyfriend's house. And I was like, who fed the animals? And she was like, well, I just put enough in their cages so that way they would be fine for like three days. And she was like, don't worry, I'll sleep over there tonight to make sure they're okay. So I'm like having a fucking panic attack right now. Anyways, so fast forward, I get home early in the morning and my sister's sleeping on the couch, but my sister brought over her animals too. So I wake my sister up and I'm like, hey, like, how are all the animals? She's like, oh, they're fine. And then we walk into the kitchen and the fucking bird cage is open and my birds are missing and her cats are nowhere to be found. So now I'm freaking the fuck out. So then I go to check on the rest of my animals, life for part three. Part three about why I will never let my sister pet sit for me ever again. So like I said, we walk into the kitchen and the bird cage is open and my birds are nowhere to be found and neither is her cat. So at that point, I run to check on all of my other animals. Thankfully, the snakes were fine. So I go to check on my tarantula and he's missing. So now I grabbed my sister's dogs, locked them in my room, and I went to go check on my hamsters. Um, yeah, she forgot to feed them the whole week because one of them ate the other one so at this point i'm having like a mental fucking breakdown and i'm moving all the furniture in the living room and everything like that and we lift up the couch and we see her cat bolt out from under the couch after that i look under the couch and my bird is literally torn into pieces under the fucking couch a few days later she texted me and she was like hey like i feel so bad like let me buy you a new bird and a new tarantula and to this day two years later i still don't know what happened to them Story time about how my boyfriend cheated on me with his best friend's sister. So a little background information, I was 15 and in ninth grade. And we're going to call my boyfriend Alex. Alex and I had been together for six months. And at the beginning of our relationship, his best friend, who we're going to call Caleb, him and I literally despised each other. But Alex would always want all three of us to hang out, so we decided that we had to get along. So we decided to keep it civil only when we were with Alex. Well, fast forward, all of a sudden, Caleb's grown-ass sister starts hanging out with Caleb and Alex 24-7. And it was weird because she was like a senior hanging out with a freshman. But I didn't think anything of it at first. Well, then out of nowhere, while I was at school, like a week later, Alex says that him and I need to have a talk. So we start walking away from Caleb, and as we're walking away, Caleb looks at me and gives me, like, this good luck look. Then he told me that he wanted us to take a break. Like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me with his best friend's sister. So like I said, he tells me that we need to talk, and then he goes, I think we should take a break. Like, what do you mean, take a break? Well, funny thing, throughout this whole break, he was still being touchy with me, still acting like we were in a whole-ass relationship. And the whole time, I was acting like I was fine, so that way I didn't want him to feel bad for me and felt like he had to get back together with me. And he was acting like nothing happened. Like I said, it was getting to the point where all my friends had started asking if him and I were back together. And I had to be like, no, we're not back together yet. Well, then Friday rolls around, aka two weeks later, and he tells me that he misses me. Shocker. So then he said he wanted to get back together. I said yes, obviously, because I still really liked him and I was a dumbass not to see the red flags. Well, now that it was second time around of us being together, I started to notice the first flags that I didn't notice in the beginning of our relationship. Like the one time he went to the mall with his friends and he gave these girls his Snapchat. He wasn't going to tell me about it, but then his friends told me, like for part three. 
Part three about how my boyfriend cheated on me with his best friend's sister. So like I said, I started noticing red flags. Well, when I had confronted him about the Snapchat thing, he told me that he felt bad if he didn't give it to them because he didn't want to be mean. Another red flag is that he would never, ever, 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 ever let me touch his phone. Like if he even saw my eyes look at his phone for 0.2 seconds, he would grab it real quick. Anyways, back to him getting with Caleb's sister. When we had got back together after our break, this one girl came up to me and she was like, hey, I have to tell you something. I didn't think it was going to be anything about my relationship with Alex, but here we go. She goes, he broke up with you to hook up with some other girl. So obviously I'm fuming. I go up to him and I'm like, did you break up with me to go and hook up with another girl? He goes, that's in the past. Why are you mad about it? Like we were broken up. Clearly he thought it was okay just to break up whenever you want to go do shit with someone else. Apparently she said that they could do stuff if we broke up. But I ended up finding out that she does this to all of her little brother's friends. Story time about how I saw my boyfriend propose to another girl in front of me. So a little background information. At the time, my boyfriend and I had been together for around four years. We had two kids together, and our relationship was pretty rocky. Within the first year of us dating, he would cheat on me all the time, and both times that I was pregnant, he would cheat on me also. Now, after I popped out the second kid, our relationship was going pretty well. And if you're wondering why I didn't leave him when he was cheating on me all the time, well, it was mainly because I grew up in a broken home. And remembering how hard it was on me whenever my parents broke up, I didn't want that for them. Well, over the past few months, my boyfriend had been traveling all over the country with his dad, going to meetings and stuff because he was getting ready to take over half the company. Well, fast forward, it's a Thursday, and my boyfriend has a meeting with some associates who flew in from out of state. And later that night, we were supposed to get on a flight with our friends to go to the Bahamas, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend literally proposed to another girl right in front of me. So like I said, my boyfriend had a meeting with some associates who flew in from out of town. And that night, we were supposed to be on a plane to the Bahamas with our friends. So while he was getting ready for this meeting, I went and I dropped the kids off early. And he went to this meeting and I drove our luggage over to our friend's house. Because they were just going to drive us to the airport. So my girlfriend and I are super pumped to go on this trip. So we decided to start drinking early and we went somewhere to get drinks. She suggests this high-end place because the guy at the bar has a crush on her and always gives her free drinks. So we're sitting there having a really good time drinking at the bar. So while we're sitting there, we hear a bunch of clapping and cheering coming from outside. So us being drunk and nosy, we go out there to see what's going on. And one of the chances I walk out there, my boyfriend is down on one knee in front of another girl. And I'm not very confrontational whenever I drink, so I told my best friend to just take me back to her house. When we got back, it was around 6 p.m. And my boyfriend tells me that he's just going to meet us at the airport like for part three. Part three about how my boyfriend proposed to another girl right in front of me. I know this is late, but better late than ever. So like I said, we left. I went back to her house and my boyfriend has the audacity to text me. I'll just meet you guys at the airport. So my best friend's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to go beat him up? Of course I said no. So I told her and her boyfriend to just go to the airport while I figured out what I was going to do and to not say a word, which was hard for my best friend because she was confrontational as fuck. So I texted my boyfriend saying that I was sick and I just wasn't going to go to the Bahamas with them. When in reality, I was packing up our whole house, leaving him with only his clothes and his shoes. So I put all the stuff in storage and I just decided to move back to my mom's house. And yes, this was in a span of a few days. So the whole time that he was gone, I was acting like everything was okay. On the last day of the trip, I sent him a text saying that I knew about everything. And I said I never wanted to hear from him again and I never wanted him to see the kids again. And he took that quite literally. I never got a text back. Well, four months after all this happened, I soon find out that he got a new house in North Carolina with his new wife and they have a daughter on the way. Story time about how my best friend kissed the guy that I liked right in front of me. So a little background information, I was 14 and in 8th grade. And we're gonna call my best friend Sophia. We were in a friend group of three. And the other person in our friend group, his name was Josh. And that just happened to be the boy that I really liked. And Sophia knew how much I liked him. Like I would tell her all the time how excited I was, you know, that we were hanging out. And she would be like, oh my god, I'm so happy for you. Like you guys would be so cute. Just a bunch of fake shit. So the one day we're all sitting in our free period, super bored. And our friend Dylan says, hey, why don't we play spin the bottle? With a water bottle, of course. So it was us four and a few other kids from our class. Well, Sophia decided to spin the bottle first. And of course, who does it land on? Josh. And I'm sitting back like I have nothing to worry about. My best friend wouldn't do that to me. Well, of course I was wrong. I thought she was going to apologize, but after she gave me a very smirky smile. Well, they started hanging out more and I felt extremely left out. So I just decided to forgive her. Story time about how I caught my grandma with my dad. 
So a little background information, I was 16 and it was the first day of 11th grade. Well, my friend wanted me to come to the mall with her after school that day. She was like, screw your grandma's birthday, just come to the mall with me. So the plan was I would sneak onto my best friend's bus after school and skip my grandma's birthday. By the way, my grandma was low-key a hoe. Like half of her kids won't even bring their husbands around her because after she got their numbers, she would end up sending nude pictures to them. Anyway, so the end of the day rolls around and I go to my locker to get my book bag when I'm called down to the office. So I go down to the the office and my mom is there to pick me up because she said that we needed to do a few things before our grandma's party well my grandma was at our house getting ready and my mom forgot her wallet at home so when we went back home i went to go put my book bag in the house when i walk in and i see my grandma and dad on the couch and i'm not even gonna say what they were doing and my mom is walking past them like she didn't see anything so after that i called one of my aunts and asked if i could stay with her for a while and now i don't talk to any of them